this video, I want to check out a new 3D printing technique called bricklayer printing. I want to know whether it can offer a way to really make prints waterproof without the need for any post-processing or coatings. For those new to this channel, I've spent the last 12 months designing and optimizing 3D printed complex builds like print in place sea scooters and water pumps that need to be really waterproof. By the end of this video, you'll know whether simply toggling a setting in your slicer is enough to make your prints completely waterproof. So I guess it's worth spending a bit of time explaining what bricklayer printing is and how it differs from traditional 3D printing. Once you import a 3D print into a slicer of your choice, when you hit the slice button, the object is split into slices that are equal to the print layer height that you set. So if you have a 0.4mm nozzle, you will typically use a 0.2mm layer height. This means that all the filament will be put down in the same plane with adjacent printed shells being quite poorly spatially packed, only touching the adjacent shell with a relatively small cross section, leaving a large void, as you can see here. Bricklayer printing, on the other hand, introduces a z-axis staggering between internal perimeter shells of half of a layer height, resulting in a castellated effect, which is similar to the staggering pattern that bricks in a wall are laid in to improve its strength. The approach significantly increases the contact area and packing efficiency of perimeter layers, and has been shown to increase the strength of printed parts. I'm really excited to see if the greater contact area, higher fill factor, coupled with the removal of weakly bonded interlayer surfaces that go through the entire wall of the print, will result in a much more waterproof print. To allow for a direct comparison with my previous tests, I'm going to use the exact same test rig that I used to test the whole range of printing parameters, post-processing techniques, and 3D printing materials in my previous video that you can find here. I will also pop a link below. This involves a polycarbonate tube with polycarbonate carbon fiber end caps that I can fill with water and pressurize with compressed air to a pressure of my choice up to at least four bar or 40 meters of water depth. The test specimens are these bullet-shaped prints that are hollow with a solid shell of different thicknesses to simulate a hull. The primary way I'm going to quantify waterproofness is by weighing each sample before and after testing to see how much water they've taken on. The smaller the number, the better. Brick layers or staggered perimeters started to gain some traction about 18 months ago when the community started releasing G-code post-processors where you could run a post-processing script on the standard slicer generated G-code to modify it before sending it to the printer. For the hardcore 3D printing community, this was more than enough to start to get this technique out there. However, in the last six months or so, this has started to be integrated into the core features of many mainstream slicers, such as Bamboo Studio, Fuchsia Slicer, and Orca Slicer, opening this technique up to almost anyone with a filament 3D printer. For this testing, I'm going to be using Orca Slicer as it works with my ChiliTech printers. However, it is slightly behind the other slicers in that the functionality hasn't quite made it into the core software build. So to be able to try out brick layers, you need to install a modified unsupported version that has been created by members of the wider Orca Slicer community. This comes with the obligatory warnings attached to running less trusted software on your computer. I'll pop a link below if you want to give it a go. So to be as efficient as possible with the testing, let's do a quick recap of the results of the previous testing I did. Let's start at the basic ambient 0.02 bar pressure tests, where the print is about 20 centimeters below the surface. ASA is already much better than PLA. Three millimeters seems to be better than two millimeter hull thickness. And a smaller nozzle of 0.4 millimeters seems to do better than a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, as well as random seams trumping aligned seams. Even without using brick layers, the ASA samples are completely watertight at 0.02 bar. So it's gonna be difficult to see any improvements of brick layers at ambient pressure. How about two bar? At two bar, all the ASA samples, including those smooth with acetone, took on a significant amount of water. Let's start the testing at two bar to see if brick layers can improve the waterproofness any further. I'm going to use ASA together with a three millimeter hull thickness, random seams, and no change to the standard extrusion flow multiplier, together with stagger perimeters enabled, aka brick layers. So the dry test hull weighs in at 97 grams. Let's set up the test rig and get testing. Now let's add some pressure, and we're off. Let's take out the hull. Oh dear, can you hear the ominous slushing noise? Let's do the weighing. Okay, it looks like it's taken on only three grams of water, which is about 10% as much as the best uncoated sample I tested last time. How exciting is that? Something that Stefan from CNC Kitchen covers really nicely in his Bricklayer's strength testing video is that because Bricklayer's can pack more efficiently, you really need to increase the extrusion flow multiplier in the internal perimeters to take up the space between the shells to maximize the contact surface and print fill factor in this region. So let's see if increasing the extrusion multiplier for the internal perimeter layers that brick layers are printed in has any effect. I'm gonna try a 1.05 multiplier and a 1.1 multiplier. Let's get them printed and on to testing. 
<clears throat> I think you had another completely dry one. How about the weighing? Wow, both of these prints have remained completely waterproof at two bar with no measurable mass gain. What a fantastic result. Let's raise the pressure to four bar and see if bricklayers can compete with epoxy coating the hull, which was the only test hull that remained waterproof at four bar last time. Again, no sign of any water slushing in either sample. And after the weigh-in, oh wow. Again, no change in mass. So again, they're both completely waterproof at four bar of pressure, equivalent to 40 meters of water depth. That is fantastic. For completeness, I'm also gonna test a sample without brick layers that has got the 1.1 times extrusion multiplier for the internal layers. At two bar, this performed as well as the brick layer version, which is a bit disappointing. But at four bar, it took on about one to two milliliters of water demonstrably showing that adding brick layers can improve the waterproofness of a 3D print, and it can also do so without the detrimental effects that go hand in hand with when you simply increase the extrusion multiplier on a 3D print, such as dimensional accuracy and increased printing failures due to the nozzle dragging on the surface of the print. I wanted to end with an illustration of just how much force 40 meters of water pressure is exerting on the hull by testing a slimmed down 1.2 millimeter hull in the test rig at four bar. Here we go. It didn't stand a chance. Now again in 10 times slow motion. You can see quite clearly how the hull buckles and fails in multiple regions in less than a tenth of a second. If you enjoy this video, then here's a couple of videos you might also like to check out. See you next time and bye for now.